stop doing this. Once I get this job, once I get over this hurdle, the Lord says, come. Just as you are. Come with his presence. Allow him to begin to minister to your heart and your life. Today's a regular, rather difficult day for me. I think it probably is for some others as well. I will say that at the end of the service, we will be taking in uh, at least one member of that I'm certain of. <coughs> uh, is there any other that would be like to be taken in as members today? And that, what that does is we have to think of that as a, just like anything else, if we was going to uh, we want to vote. We have to say, hey, guess what? I want to put my name down there to say, hey, sign me up so I can vote. Uh, within the Church of God, actually, it is it is a, a rule that you have to be a member of uh, the Church of God in order to vote for a pastor. So that is something that is uh, I want everyone to know. It's not because the pastor is trying to be mean. Uh, I love each and every one of you. But if you want that... Uh, Ability to vote. Uh, when, uh, you know, we want we want we want the right person to be here. And uh, you know, if you would ask me uh, a few months ago, I would have thought it was always going to be me. Uh, but uh, you know, it was, especially the last couple of weeks when I knew you were certain. But uh, you know, I hope that God knows who's supposed to be here. And so we don't take this thing lightly. And uh, I want the Lord's will to be done. Amen. You say amen. 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 Wednesday night was a, a very interesting night, and there was a, something that was brought forth that uh, blessed me. And uh, I'm going to ask Sister Diane if I can put the mic to it. I'll do this from up here. Mm-hmm. You can. Uh, that's all right. You can put it on there. I'm going to try this for now. Right over here, sis. But anyway. You can explain how it came to you and all that good stuff, but... <laughs> You've heard, probably heard me say it before, I'm kind of a Fox News junkie. Um, that could be a good thing, that could be a bad thing too, but anyway, um, Monday morning, after we've had such a... We felt like the rug had been pulled out from under us, like all of you feel, and it was been really hard, but Monday morning, as soon as I turned the TV on, there were two guys sitting there talking to the Fox News guys, and... and they had been offered a job at for HGTV, but when HGTV found, found out they were making Christian statements about how sin is bad and all this, they jerked their contract. But they, they wrote a book, and the one guy spoke, I, I felt like it was directly to me to share to Pastor Ken and the rest of you, but it says, when you're willing to let go of what you have in your hand, God can give you what he has in his. And that is so true. That's for all of us today. And I, I just felt like we needed to hear this, all of us. And all week, I've been very tearful. Everything everything makes me cry, and I'm not usually like that. But I really feel like God has something special for us here. And I think he really has something special for Pastor Ted also. Amen. <laughs> things that's come along our way that we we don't always understand why things happen the way they do. Life is difficult, you know, uh, we know that we have trials and tribulations and uh, like I say things aren't always easy. Amen? Amen. And uh, this morning if you want to turn to Joshua chapter 1, I'm going to start there and I'm not sure if uh, I've got a I, I was told it might be a good idea to cut it a little bit short so I will try to do my best to do that. Uh, but if, as you're turning there, uh, uh, you know, I begin to think about, you know, have you ever heard that some greatest is, is by faithfulness? And I remember as a child hearing that song, and there was one that would really just turn my heart towards God. And so that's what I titled the, the message today. But I thought as, uh, as a little child, as, as, you, as you're turning there, 
is this mother and her little four-year-old daughter. And they were preparing to go to sleep for the night, and the child was afraid of the night. The child was afraid of the dark. And the mother was alone with the child. And because of that night, she also was a bit fearful. But when they turned the light out, the child began to catch a glimpse of the moon outside the window. She said, Mother, is the moon God's light? Mother said, Yes. God's lights are always shining. They never go out. The next question was, will, but, but will God blow out his light tonight and go to sleep? No, my God. God never goes to sleep. Then the little girl said, well, then as long as I know that God is going to be awake all night, then I'm not going to be afraid. Folks, I want you to know God's not sleeping. Even though we can get a little bit nervous about things, I actually did make a trip down to Seymour, Indiana yesterday, or day before yesterday, day before yesterday. and uh, night and day. Night and day. Got one piano player, and guys don't have to get dark. <laughs> and uh, the, the, the man who leads worship was not a bad thing, I'm not saying that. He's 76 years old. Uh, so he whipped out all these songs. I was like, I don't know that one, I don't know that one, I don't know that one, I don't know that one. It's, it's a whole different ballgame to me. Because you all know how I like to worship. And, uh, you know, then I hear that pretty much everybody's gone. But, you know, God knows what he's doing. God knows what he's doing. And so, uh, you know, when God says do what you do, amen? amen. I'm not going to be afraid. The Lord is with me wherever I go, amen? amen. Let's start with verse 1 of Joshua 1. It says, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore rise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people unto the land, which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that I have given you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this leaven, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous. I'm going to stop right there. Only be thou strong and very courageous. I can read the rest of that verse, so I'll just do that that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee, turn not from it to the right or to the left, that, that, thou, what? that thou mayest prosper wheresoever thou goest. Amen? I think about that. Joshua, he was chosen by God. Guess what? Each one of us are chosen by God. We are chosen by God. I, I, I spoke of it in the past. To, to think about the fact that, that when we were, when, when, when there, that thing was taking place between your mama and your daddy, God decided who you were going to be. He decided who I was going to be. And that made us winners. He chose you, Brother life. You could have been one of, I don't know how many other different people, but God, but God chose you. 
He chose you, and He chose each one of us. And He has a plan and a purpose for our lives. Amen. But it's up to us to choose Him back. Every relationship. It, 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 it takes two. I think about Valentine's Day, which yesterday. Well, guess what? It's not just enough for me to love my wife. But she's got to love me back. It's not just enough for God to love the world, but guess what? We've got to love Him back. For well, the greatest man is to love the Lord that God. With all your heart and all your mind and all your soul. Joshua, he was chosen by God to complete the work. What was it? To, to lead Israel into the promised land. Now see, I, I used to think of this here text sometimes, often, because so often in the past, God always used me as a one who would come in, a people that was hurting, a, a people that was lost, and that's what I'm going to now, a people that's hurting. And then I feel like there's, there's hurting people here as well. And so my heart was like, yeah, I'm just ripping you apart, you know? But these people were hurting, but, but I always used to, Lord, this is the way you use me. I was associate pastor for many years. I, I, I served under the, the, the pastor. I watched a lot of things. I learned a lot of things. I, I was Joshua. But now I feel like God's saying, hey, guess what? It's time for the Lord to bring Joshua in here. Somebody else that's going to take these people to the promised land. Take them where I couldn't get them, amen? That, that Moses could get them so far. Moses did everything that he could do. He wasn't perfect. Lord knows I'm not perfect. <laughs> but guess what? He wasn't the one to get them into the promised land. But I believe that we're living in the last of the last days, folks, and I, need, I believe that we need to be about the Father's business. I need, we need to be thinking about, guess what? I want to stay on the path. I don't want to be turning to the right or to the left. I want to go the way that God is telling me to go. I couldn't tell God no. I wanted to. I wrestled with it. But God said, <coughs> you sit there and you preach it all day long, you better do it. You know, you can say it quite like that, but it's like, oh, okay. But Joshua was chosen to, to complete the work of leading Israel into the promised land. God had made the promise over 400 years earlier to Abraham. We talked about Abraham last week. He, he promised Abraham that he would receive this land. Oh, all the milk and honey. Oh, man, all this stuff was going to be there. Amen. The time had gone by. Abraham's grandson, Jacob, he went into Egypt and with his family and including Joseph and his sons, they numbered only about 70 people. And guess what? God continued to pour out his blessings on them. And guess what? More and more they began to multiply. That's what God wants to do with this church. That's what God wants to do with that church in, in Seymour. He places us where he will. And then he says, guess what? I want you to do what I say to do and multiply. Amen. Multiply. But soon the Egyptians, the enemy don't like it when God is blessing you. And back then the, the Egyptians didn't like it. So guess what? They begin to enslave them. And they begin to make it harder and harder. The, the tax ma the tax masters, as they call them, they made the work harder and harder. And the children of God cried out to God. And it seemed like God's promise was so far away. But finally, God sent them a deliver named Moses. And under the hand of God, if God would lead him, amen, he brought the children, he brought the children of Israel through so much, amen. Moses led them. Moses was God's man. He, he did what God told him to do. He brought them to the law. The laws of God, that they might understand that they needed God. That they couldn't do it on their own. He, he spoke with God as if it was face to face. I think most of us remember the story. How the children of Israel, they constantly were, 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 were falling. They, they were victory. They, they would fall into unbelief and, and disobedience unto God. Amen. And to the point of even the desire to stone Moses. I'm sure there's some people here that would, at times would have loved to have stoned me if we did that nowadays. 
Believe me, they have stumped me with their words. Some people say, I can't believe that. It's true, because I've heard it. <laughs> I've heard it with my own ears. <laughs> but at one point, they even reached the head of the promised Got so close, but once again, they fell back in unbelief. They spent more than 40 years wandering around. How long? Yet? There might be some folks here this morning that has been wandering around. Just wander around, not really willing to, to completely surrender to God, say, yes, Lord, I'll do it your way. But continue to wander around and think that God will say, that's fine. But see, of course, not everyone, that day when they got so close to the promised land, not everyone was willing to give up. I mean, you know, we talked about the, the time where, where, where they sent in the spies. And they come back and all of them have a negative report. Oh, we can't do this. We can't. Oh, how are we going to do this? We can't do this. That's what the enemy wants this church to do. Pastor Ted, no, we can't do this. We can't do this. Pastor Ted is just a man. It's him. God's going to build this. He just needs tools that's ready to be used by him. We know that two men stood the test, Joseph and Caleb. Tells us back in Numbers 1330, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well in the Oh yeah. Folks, no matter what comes before abundant love, if you folks See God's face. <laughs> Listen to him. Walk in that path. There's nothing. <laughs> and to let us possess what God has for us. Amen. For we are well able to overcome it. But yet these people spent 40 years. One. Still wanting the promises of God. Folks want some things from God. But guess what? First if I want God's blessings, if I want His benefit, I've got to give Him what He wants to. Amen? It, it goes both ways. We, we talk about that. You know what? I didn't, well, I did take her out to dinner, but I still have to give my wife her, her but she knows I got it. I got it. I got it. Just we had grandkids in the house, and so we'll probably get some special time together again tonight, hopefully. And, uh, you, you, yeah, but yeah, yeah, I don't know if she has in there or not. I don't even know. But I'm fine if I don't. But but you never do that. Because we love each other. She gives to me and I give to her. God gives to us every day. Do we give back to him? But now I think about that song. If you all remember it, great is thy faithfulness. Sing it with me. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have need is thy hand and provide Great is thy faithfulness, Lord. That great hymn, it was written by a guy by the name of Thomas Chisholm. He did not write this hymn because of something, that something great had happened. You know? Oh man, it's, everything's happened great in my life. <laughs> yeah! Not at all. He wrote it because he looked back over his life and he learned that, hey, guess what? To see that, that, that the great faithfulness of God was in his life. At age 75, he wrote these words. My income has not been large at any time due to impaired health in the earlier years, which has followed me on until now. Although I must not fail to record here the unfailing faithfulness of a covenant-keeping God and that he has given me many wonderful displays of his providing care for which I am filled with astonishing Greatness. 
raise us up. So it's important to see the faithfulness of God. We need to see that God is a faithful God. Amen. If we want, if we want to receive these promises, all of his, his promises are yes and amen. Amen? amen. So in our text this morning, Moses has just passed away. Not to die. <laughs> Hope I'm dying to myself. You know, I'm, I'm not saying I'm anything like Moses. I'm just using that illustration. But he just passed away. So Moses is gone. He, he's out of the picture. And that's what's going to happen after today, unfortunately. Uh, probably, unfortunately, if we just give it to God. I, I need to quit saying that. But Moses was gone. But just because Moses was gone, it did not mean that the plans of God were gone as well. Joshua was raised up to continue the work of God, and there is a man, and I'm not saying who he is, God knows, who is to continue the work of God here in the month of love. But God gave Joshua some assurances. And I believe that every believer needs to be reminded of a couple of truths, and I won't, I'll try not to go too far, too long today. Can you say, great is your faithfulness? Great is your faithfulness. Amen. Great is your faithfulness, oh God. Great is your faithfulness, oh God. We've that on that one song. Great is your faithfulness, oh God. Amen. Now say, I, I will believe. I will believe. All of your promises. All of your promises. I'm going to own that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you all to the test. This is if you don't have a promise, but don't get one. You don't have a promise. I love promise books. You can go to the Bible store, probably get a promise book. If you can't find one there, you can go to Goodwood and get it for a Bible book. Promises. Get in there and you can see the promises of God. And then find them in your Bible and highlight them and say, these are the promises of God. And guess what? Believe the promises of God because God is a faithful God. And if God says it, you can chop it up. Amen? Amen. Amen. So say, I will believe. All of your promises. All your promises. I hope you guys keep saying that. I hope I keep saying that. Lord help me. What exactly is a promise? <laughs> the dictionary begins to tell us it's a de- it's a declaration that one will do or refrain from doing something specified. The word promise comes from a Latin word that, that, that means to set forth. To set forth. And, and God sets forth what He will do. He tells us ahead of time. Guess what? This is a promise to you. Just like He made that promise to Abraham. And just as He began to give this promise to Joshua, guess what? He sets it forth. And if He said it, it's true. Amen? Amen. God sets forth what He will do. And the Word of God says, He says to Abraham here in Genesis 17 and 8. Many years before. For like 400 years. And I will give unto thee. And I will give unto thee. And to thy seed after thee. The land wherein thou art a stranger. All the, uh, all the land of Canaan. For an everlasting possession. And I will be their God. God made a promise. He told Abraham that his descendants. And <laughs> would receive the land of Canaan as an inheritance. Amen. He's telling you and me that, that he has something that he wanted to, want to prepare for you and me. Amen. He said, he, he, he tells us in John 14. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive him myself, unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. He wants to prepare a place for you and me, folks, as children of God. He did it by going to the cross and paying for our sin. But here we find that Joshua, in Joshua 1, that, that God spoke to Joshua. He begins to speak to him. He goes, Moses, my servant, is dead. Then he tells him to, to rise. He tells him to get up. He said, it's time to cross over. It's time to cross over through a... Amen? Amen. Go to the land that I'm giving you. We know according to Deuteronomy 34, 8, that Israel mourned for Moses for like 30 days. Now I imagine there was a lot of hurt, sad, like what are we going to do? They felt lost. Not, I wasn't expecting this. What are we going to do now? Moses, God's man, was gone. 
Maybe even Joshua would begin to question a little bit. Who knows? But God spoke and told them. And that's what God wants to do to each one of us if we're ready to listen. He wants to speak words of comfort, of strength, of guidance. He reminds them of the promise he made to Abraham 400 years ago. It reminds Joshua of a very important truth uh, that we too need to be reminded of, that his work, uh, uh-huh, that his promise is not dependent upon man. It's dependent upon God. He reminds Joshua that he is the one who brings forth the blessing. In verse 2 it says, that second part of it, it says, Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people unto the land, which, he says, which I do give to them. See, he said, guess what? It ain't you. You don't have to do it, Joshua. You don't have to do it. I, if you just do what I'm telling you to do, I will give it to them. Unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. And in verse 3, God says, Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Now I'm certain that God wants Joshua to see that God is the giver. How do we look at God? Do we look at him as a giver? As one who wants to bless us? He is. He's the one who has given us everything. Everything. And the good word you get comes down from the Father of heaven and eyes. He's the giver, not Moses. Or anyone else. I want you to see this morning that God's great promises are determined because of his divine nature of who he is. God is the giver. He is the source. God is the one who's faithful. Folks, we need to understand what His promises are to you and me. Can you say, I will believe all your promises? I will believe all your promises. I will believe all your promises. Just because Moses is gone, did not mean the work and the promise of God would be drawn as well. And folks, that's why I'm hoping that you begin to see it's not dependent upon me. It's dependent upon what God wants to do in this body. I see God as one who wants to bless. He wants to bless his people. He wants to bless you and me. Far off, far too often we tend to look at others as the one who wants to bless us. My job. You know, what I I got I got to do this. I got to work hard. I need this money. Whatever. You know, we, we think well. If if I treat them right, they're going to treat me right. All these different things. But guess what, folks? God wants to do some good things for you and me. Now, if you think of it, I love that song Sister Becky sings. I think, did you write that yourself, sis? Yes, you did. Did. I, I, for some reason, I thought you wrote that. Now, that, that, that was given to somebody like, like God. Amen. But heaven will be with the journey when I get there. Amen. Amen. Folks, I got, I got so much I can share with you. I'm not going to do all that. I, got so, I, I asked Brother Mike if I got tons of scripture, but I'm not going to hold you all day. I'm not, not going to do that. But I believe that God wants to bless us. Because God is a faithful God. I believe all his promises. I believe every last one of them. I hope you do as well. I was going to go to a separate, another thing, and I'll just touch on it. Folks, not only do I believe in all of his promises, you know, folks, we need to get used to saying that to him, but God, no matter what, I will remain. And it's a choice we make. I will remain in your presence. See, we know that he says he'll never leave us mistake us. I 
I'm going to go ahead and buy it. I'm going to cut it real short. But folks, I believe that we have a choice of whether we're really in his presence. You see what I'm saying? I can sit <coughs> in my house. And my wife can be there too. She can walk around. I can walk around. I can do my thing. She can do her thing. Maybe she's talking to me if I'm not listening. 